Good evening folks, this is uh, Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to my channel. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. And uh, it's a big name but uh, easy to understand. Most often the patients come with uh, saying that doctor I just uh, uh, peed blood. It would be frightening, right? Somebody peeing blood, Any, anybody would be frightened in those circumstances and people say that uh, they are having abdominal pain I'm going to explain why abdominal pain comes in this problem so paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria is one of a very small distinguished groups of disorders and uh, there is a very interesting history actually like many years ago when people used to complain that they are peeing blood early in the morning they did some studies on these patients and they found out in the early morning when the uh, when the pH falls down and they, they noticed this because of the fall in the pH the, these blood cells are breaking up and it's causing hemolysis and that's why these people are having the problem and after a few years, what happened is like uh, one investigator thought probably this is due to hypoxia. So he put this patient on a ventilator. Those days it is used to call like iron lung. So artificial mechanical ventilation. And what happened was like all of a sudden, the patient did not have hemolysis in the morning because of the oxygenation prevented hypoxia and the hypoxia the, did not result in low pH and the lysis did not happen through the night and those are the olden days this thought that low pH and they are right but these days we have uh, all kinds of uh, uh, nanotechnology many many advances in biochemistry and uh, nano um, um, and, and immunology so we should know better right the, that's what happened we have we are seeing more and more research going into this uh, disease and we are learning new things now let me start with a little bit of uh, introduction here these patients many times they will have a thromboembolism and i'm going to i mean the research is still going on why these patients will have thromboembolism why, why, what exactly is causing it? We don't have the right answers at this time, but the research is going on. But the genetics, we have very good genetics right, right now. Especially, there is a gene called PAGA. This gene, PGA gene, it is mutated in hematopoietic cells in the patients with uh, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. So pig A gene is uh, X is located on the X chromosome, and you know right, the X chromosome is located in both males and females, so both of both sexes can cause have this problem. So pig A catalyzes the transfer of a phosphatidyl inositol group in the transfer of one protein to the other protein on the membranes of red blood cells. So what happens when the Pig A is missing or when the pig A is defective, the normal surface proteins are missing. Now, let me give you two numbers here, CD55 and CD59. So on a normal red blood cells, you have these two, um, uh, I would say two proteins. And these proteins, they protect when the complement attacks the red blood cells. So I, I, I'm going to explain that more intensely in a minute because uh, that needs a little bit of understanding. Otherwise, it, the whole thing would be confusing. The entire, uh, uh, like the uh, symptoms, the clinical symptoms, the laboratory diagnosis, and uh, even the uh, treatment depends on this pathophysiology. I mean, I should not be even telling this. You, you know, right? Like when we understand the pathophysiology, it dictates everything we do. So let us go 
uh, I'm thinking about how to explain this a little bit uh, simply. Like for example, let us say I have this water bottle in my hand and uh, it is good when I am thirsty. I take this water bottle and uh, I drink. And uh, But imagine I am going in a car. I am thirsty and I took the bottle to drink water and it slipped out of my hand and I dropped it between my leg and the brake. Suddenly this becomes an agent of death, right? Because I can't reach the brakes of my vehicle and it can uh, result in an injury or a fatal accident. So the water bottle is good as long as it stays in its place and serves its purpose. But when it loses its place, it becomes a dangerous object. That's the same thing happening in this immunological disease. There is complement and complements are important. You see, when we have complement deficiencies, we, de we get diseases like Neisseria, meningitis and all that stuff. And on the red cell membrane, we have CD55 and 59. Let us say CD55 positive and CD55, CD59 positive. So on the red cell membrane, we have these two. And when the complement comes, these two proteins on the surface of this red cell, it prevents the attack by the complements and the red blood cell is preserved. That's how red blood cells, they stay in the, red, in the, in the intravascular space. But when the two proteins like CD55 and the CD59 are missing on the surface of a red blood cell, what happens? The complement now attacks these red blood cells because now they are CD55 minus and CD59 minus. And as a result, these red blood cells undergo hemolysis and you see the anemia, hemolytic anemia. You see, that's, the, that's, the, that's what is happening. The complement is basically attacking the red blood cells because there is deficiency of CD55 and CD59. Why did this deficiency happen? As I said, PIGA, the gene, is mutated. As a result of that mutation, the glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol reactions are not happening. And because they are not happening, the proteins on the surface of red blood cells are not formed. And as a result, these red blood cells now became vulnerable for the complement attacks. Basically, that the pathophysiology. I mean, I'm stressing this uh, pathophysiology because it depends. I mean, it uh, the understanding of this helps you a lot. For example, imagine how are you going to treat this disease? Now, complement is coming, right? The red blood cells deficient of CD55 and 59 are here. As the complement is coming to attack them, how do you protect these red blood cells? One thing is you can add CD55 and CD59 into the blood so that those proteins reach these red blood cells, coat these red blood cells and prevent the action of complement. That's one form of treatment using artificial CD55 and CD59. The next form of treatment you can guess. The complement is coming, so attack the complement. That's exactly what, 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 what we have. The monoclonal antibodies. That is the treatment for this disease. You create the monoclonal antibodies the monoclonal antibodies go and attack the complement so that the complement cannot attack the surface of red blood cells. So, so simple. Now, as a result of the treatment, what complications can you guess? 
Now, don't make a villain out of compliment. Compliment is important. Compliment is part of God's design in our body to protect our body from, uh, from infectious organisms. And you know that, like in congenital compliment deficiencies, we see an increased uh, development of diseases, like especially Neisseria meningitis. So now, using monoclonal antibodies, you are deactivating immune system uh, of the complement. What happens? Complement deficiencies come. Because of the complement deficiencies, these patients with paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria now can get meningitis. So you see how pathophysiology is helping us to draw conclusions and to guess the treatment and to guess the complications of treatment and all of that. And uh, as a result, these patients are developing intravascular hemolysis. Now, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria is not just about uh, hemolysis. There is also neutropenia. There is also thrombocytopenia. So there is, you can guess from that. So that is the triad you see in this unique disease. The hemolysis, neutropenia, and uh, thrombocytopenia. So from hemolysis, you can guess what happens, anemia. From thrombocytopenia, you can guess because thrombocytes are important in coagulation. And thrombocytes in thrombocytopenia is what is happening. All of a sudden, patient is at risk for venous thrombosis. And sometimes if the venous thrombosis happens in the abdomen, patients will come to you with abdominal pain. And then there is the third one, the neutropenia. And the neutropenia, you can guess, when white blood cells are absent, they are the policemen of our body, right? When they are absent, we are at risk to develop all kinds of infectious diseases. So hemolysis, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, this is the triad we see in paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. And uh, hopefully this pathophysiology little bit help you to understand about this disease. In the next video, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the laboratory uh, investigations available to identify this disease and also the treatment. Hopefully that helped you a little bit. Thank you. Have a nice day.